Welcome to video number four in the Preparing for Work series. The focus in this video is all about resume. Understanding the importance of a resume and how to create one is crucial when preparing for work. And certainly one of the first steps to getting hired is having an effective resume. In this video we will examine resume writing and development skills to help get you noticed. At times you will be asked to pause this video to complete certain tasks before proceeding. Take the required time to complete these tasks as they are going to help guide your thinking and help you to create a personalized resume of your own. Let's watch a short video now just to make sure that you know what a resume is and the purpose that it serves. We would like you to think of the resume as a marketing tool which showcases your relevant skills and experiences to employers. There is a common misconception that a resume automatically leads to a job offer. However, that is not necessarily the case. In reality, a successful resume will get you the interview. Ideally, at this stage, your resume will be one page, with the maximum number of pages most likely being two. Let's say if you have an abundance of experience in a particular field and it relates to the job you are applying for, then a two-page resume may be appropriate. Or, if you are applying to graduate school, a longer resume may be acceptable. However, in most cases, employers expect to see a one-page resume that is targeted and concise. Who needs a resume, you ask? Anyone who is currently working or is looking for, or planning to look for, a job or internship, and anyone who is applying to graduate school. So in summary, who needs a resume? You do. It is never too early to start crafting a master resume. When it is time for you to apply for clubs, internships, or jobs, you can start tailoring it which means to target your resume specifically to a position by incorporating keywords and focusing on relevant experiences. Here's a fun fact. Most employers don't spend very much time looking over your resume. At most, they will spend 20 to 30 seconds, but it is not uncommon for them to spend less than 10 seconds reading over your resume. With that being said, it is crucial for your resume to be concise and organized. Now that you have some understanding of a resume and its purpose, I'll now ask you to follow these instructions to access the resume booklet from the School Division's website. It has fillable fields and requires no printing. This booklet will help to activate your thinking and help you to begin crafting your own resume. Once you have accessed the booklet from the website, Continue playing this video for further instruction. To access the resume booklet, go to your web browser and search for Pembina Trail School Division. Once on the School Division's main page, on the top menu, What We Offer, click on Career and Community. Under the Additional Resources page on your left-hand side, you will find the resume booklet for video number four. Click on that to access it. Now that you have access to your resume booklet, take a look at the question on page one. Try to answer the first question, which is, List three pieces of information you already know to include on a resume. Once you're finished, continue playing this video. Now that you've shared your thinking in your resume booklet, let's watch an instructional video titled, How to Write a Resume That Will Get You Hired. Pay close attention to this video. You'll be asked to share the key points in your resume booklet afterwards. Here with my good friend Armando here in the HR office of Ramsey Solutions, and we're going to help you, yes, a high school student, write an impressive resume with no experience. Keep it live right here on the AO. That's right, it's another edition of the AO right here. 
in Nashville, Tennessee at the office of Ramsey Solutions. I'm so thrilled about today because I am here with one of my good friends, Armando, who is our executive director of HR. As I travel around the country, students are asking me every everywhere I go, Armando, hey, Anthony, how do I write a resume? I have no job experience, but how do I write a resume? And so today, we're going to talk about that because this guy and this office Y'all see about how many resumes a year? Wow, about 12,000 resumes a year. (laughs) 12,000 resumes. So for sure, he can help us write a good resume. Let's go back 15 years ago. I'm uh, I'm a junior in high school, and let's show me how to put Anthony O'Neill on a resume. All right, that's fantastic. I'll tell you what, let's go here. So truthfully, we should start, and we're just going to call you AO. AO. But you know, we should start with your name at the top, right? There are a lot of people that get really cute and they think they're going to put it somewhere else, and so they'll come down here and put their name down here, or they'll put their nickname down here or something okay. like that. Anthony, we just want to know your name. So, right, number one is name has to be at the very top. Yes. Okay. And followed by. Address? Do we contact you? Okay. So, your preferred method of contact. Now, for a lot of kids nowadays, that's their mobile phone, right? Okay. And so the mobile phone should be next. The address could be third. Okay. The address is no longer as important. It's not? No. Wow. Okay. You know why? Why? Because if you're applying for me, I'm assuming you can get here, right? Yes. And and so so you're going to live somewhere within a 5 to 12 mile radius Radius. maximum of where I'm at. Okay. Otherwise, you wouldn't be applying here. Yes, sure. Now, if you're applying online and you're applying someplace you can't be there, you should not be applying there. Gotcha. Okay. So if I'm a high school student, that's good. I mean, if I want to work at Chick-fil-A, McDonald's, or whatever, I need to be within a certain mile radius or at least make sure I can get there. Right. Okay. If you can't get there, you shouldn't apply there. Okay. Uh, so, so that really is the top, right? Okay. And so then because you don't have a lot of job experience, then the very first thing that you should have on your resume is what is your goal? If I want to go to Chick-fil-A and work for Chick-fil-A, yep. what is my goal? You want to gain experience in the job market. Does that change if I want to go work at Target? You want to gain experience in the job market, specifically in retail. So the goal get specific to where we are going. So if I want to go to Target, I'm gaining experience in retail. If I'm going to Chick-fil-A, I'm gaining experience in restaurant and hospitality, for example. Ooh. The, the resume is going to get you in the door, but then when you're having an interview, you want to talk to them about, if this is your favorite restaurant, say that. Ooh. Say, this is my favorite restaurant. If you're applying at Best Buy and this is where you shop when you buy electronics, tell them and tell them why. Mm. Why do you shop there, right? So, Anthony, it's just as important to let them know that you're a patron there as it is to let them know you want to work there. Okay. Now, we know that we don't have a lot of jobs to begin with job history. So, what do we want to begin with? Education. Yeah. I'm in school. Right, exactly. Okay. So, tell me about your school, Anthony. Where'd you go to high school? I went to Southview High School. Okay. Okay. Did you do anything there? Yes, I was on the NFL team, which is the National Forensic League, the debate team. The NFL? Yeah, NFL, National okay. Forensics League, which right, was debating. And, and then, then I played basketball. And then you'd want to explain this, right? So this okay. is, you could say NFL and then the years. How many years did you do that? All three, so three okay, years. Okay, so you want to put three years and okay. spell out what that is, right? Like, what did you do there? What did you learn there? Okay, that's good. Now, National Forensic League does what? We debate. We travel around different schools and we debate on different topics, different lectures, stuff like that. And I was actually the number one debater in the state of North Carolina. Why does that not surprise me? Why does that not surprise me? (laughs) So that's big. And you said you were in basketball? Yes. I played basketball. This is good. Anthony, why would basketball be important on a resume? No idea. (laughs) I ain't gonna lie. I have no idea why basketball would be good on a resume. Anthony, here's why, because it's going to show leadership. Anthony, were you just a regular basketball player, or did you excel? I excelled. I was actually wasn't the the team captain, but I was the assistant team captain. Ooh, see, that's big because you have leadership traits, right? Yes, I see where you're going. You have leadership traits, and so you're not just going to list basketball. You're going to say the assistant team captain, right? So basketball is big because you are the assistant team 
captain. Okay. And so that's where it becomes important. Okay. So so we're going to list everything. Okay. So we're, right now we're just saying education. We're going to stay with high school. We're not going to middle school at this point. Okay. Okay. If you had some college, so if you were doing this and you were in college and you had limited background, you would still do the same thing. Start at college. Okay. Don't go to high school. Stay where you are. Okay. So that's good. So that's real good here. So when you're in college, if you're a college student watching this, list all of your college education. Right. Do not list high school education. Right. That's good stuff. And then we're going to move from that into actual background and experience. Background and experience. So this is your job history, right? Okay. So at this point, we're saying, okay, what is the history of jobs for me? And people say, well, didn't I just tell you I didn't have job experience? Right, right. But we do. Okay. We, we have more job experience than we actually know because, for example, as a little kid, right? I used to mow my aunt's lawn. Absolutely. And I did that all summer long. It was her lawnmower, but it was my job to be there. I mowed all my neighbor's yard. So you had a job, right? You were yes. a lawn keeper. You were a yes. landscaper. Yes. Right? Yes. I what said, happened I if said you lawn. 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 Got it. <laughs> <laughs> but you might have yawned. Yeah, I doing. sold up okay. there. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So when you're there and we're doing that, that's experience, right? That gets listed. Okay. So all of you all who are babysitting, you're, you're cutting grass. Heck, if you're putting up fences, if whatever you're doing right now that may not be a job, it technically is a job because you're getting paid right. to babysit. Yeah. You're getting paid to Absolutely. cut grass. Yeah. So it is a job. It's just from different people that you're helping and you're serving. We're going to list all of those kind of jobs. Okay. And all the while we're thinking, who's my references, right? All right. the while we're saying, who are going to be my references? Who are these people that I can put down on my reference sheet? Okay. My reference sheet is going to have between three and five names. That's it. I would prefer for it not to be any relatives. However, you may end up with your relatives. I would have ended up with my aunt, right? Okay. And if anybody had met my aunt, they'd go, holy cow, she's the toughest <laughs> reference ever. Right? But, but that's how she was. Okay. She was my toughest customer, wow. and so I would have ended up with her on my reference sheet. Gotcha. How do I list me cutting my neighbor's yard? So how, how would I write that down? Okay. So this is going to be very hard for you guys to so follow along, okay? I'm going to try to go slow. Anthony. Okay. Lawn care specialist. Cutting grass. I was a lawn care specialist. Yeah, you are too. Okay, so lawn care specialist. Yeah. And so did you only cut or did you have to make sure that the clippings weren't on the driveway and on the sidewalk? Absolutely. I had to cut. I had to trim. I had to pick up the grass and blow it off of the uh, driveway. So you manicured the lawn, right? Oh, my. Holy cow, yes. man. You did a lot. Yes. Okay. And so I even had to water the grass throughout the week. Yeah. Yeah. When they weren't there. Yeah. So you could say, you know, you had full care. Manicure and full care. You took care of everything, right? Anything they needed, you took care of it. Wow. If you babysat. Okay. Right? So first of all, babysitting doesn't get the credit it deserves, right? You don't realize this till much later in life. Right. How hard it is for you to leave your kids with somebody else. Okay. As you get older, as I get older, mm -hmm. and I actually have kids, I realize that you don't leave your kids with just, just anybody. anybody. So let's go back to this recap. So we've gone from your name and your contact. Which is a number. We've put in a goal that is customized to where you're applying. Okay. We've started with education, and we've listed the education and any extracurricular activities you've done. Okay, one thing that's not here is your grade point average. Is that something that we want to list? It is. However, most of the people, me... Okay. So this is for me, Anthony. Okay. Not for any, not for you guys. You guys are great, but for me, I didn't do well in high school. No, uh, no, no. That's <laughs> me too. I mean, so, I literally did. so I didn't list it. Okay. But if you're one of those people that excel, you should list it. That's it's good. important. I mean, it's truthful. It's important. Right, so it let's, just wasn't important. So let, let's just be honest here. You, you want to sell the good side of you. Yep. And so if you have a 2.0, 2.5 GPA, you don't list it. Let's just be real, because that was me. I graduated with literally right at a 2.0, um, and I, I would not have listed my grade point average as well, because that probably could have hurt my job, yeah. or at least the chances to get a good job. Right, but if you're a 3.5, 
you would understand. You're a 3.8. If you're a 4.0, yes. If, you're you, if you're about to graduate summa cum laude, yeah. then you want to list that, yeah. right? How do we, you know, how do we make sure the grammar is right on their resume? What should they do? Yeah. Your best proofreader for all of you watching this video is your English professor or English teacher if you're in high school, right? That is good. Yeah, that is real good. Okay. Use your resources. Yeah, and we talked about this in another video. Use all the resources, <laughs> yeah. all of them. As we are closing out here, Armando, I want to thank you so much for your time. Is there any last, anything you want to end with here? Yeah, so the last things I'll say is, and this is not so much resume writing, but it is. So we'll put out a template, yes. right? Yes. But but the last thing I want to say is when you when you fill out a job application and you're truthful, and, and a lot of people now have places where you upload. So you're working online and you're uploading your resume, right? Check the formatting. Make sure your format is user-friendly so that the software they're using will upload it correctly. Secondly, secondly and almost as important, is follow-up. Just because you applied someplace and now you're waiting for people to call, call you back, you know what we call those people that are waiting for somebody to call them back? We call them unemployed. Yeah, yeah. That's what we call them, Anthony. Yeah, that's good. And so you want some follow-up, especially early on. People get busy, and so Publix is not going to call you for a sacking position immediately, but if you're there and if you go meet the manager and you say, hey, I just wanted to take a minute and shake your hand. I've already filled out an application. Here's my name. If you have that on a Post-it note and you leave it with them, if you have something that, that you can leave with them and say, I, I've already filled out, I've already done your process, right? In other words, I'm not circumventing your process. Yes. I've already done it, but now I just want to meet you and have you meet me. Oh. I like that. And you know, this is what we're going to do. This is what we're going to do. Because I, I want you all to be successful. You know me. I have a heart for it for young people. We're going to upload. I'm on my website. And the link will be here below. A mock resume of myself. So just a template of myself when I was 17. This is my resume. I want you to go through that. I want you to download it. And this is what I want you to do as well. If you have any questions, would this qualify as a job? I want you to leave that question below in the comment section. And what I'm going to do for this video only, myself and my team, we're going to answer those questions. Okay, hey, you can do this. And if I don't know that answer, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to ask Armando, hey, how do we, how do, we do this? A young person said they done this. Can this be a job? It's just something in your resume because I want you to be successful. You know why? Because it's that serious. That's what I'm talking about. So I want you to make sure that you are subscribed to the channel. Y'all, I have a lot of great stuff coming. This is just a little bit. I'm telling you, when you see what's coming, it's going to be amazing. So hit that subscribe button right next to it. Hit that bell button. Ding. You know me always. I love that ding, ding, ding. Because I'm telling you, I do not want you to miss these amazing life skill videos that I'm sending your way. Subscribe. Hit the bell. And tell a friend. And leave a question or leave a comment. Gotta go. It's your boy. It's the AO. Now that you've finished watching Anthony's video, in your resume booklet, take a few minutes and list the main points from the video that stood out to you. Pause this video now and resume it when you're finished in your resume booklet. In video one in the Preparing for Work series, we introduce you to My Blueprint and help you to establish a free account. Did you know that My Blueprint has its own resume creation tool within it? My Blueprint uses a format with 11 sections to organize a resume, as listed on your screen. Don't worry, these will be explained later within My Blueprint. It's time to begin crafting your own resume. Using your resume booklet, fill in as many sections as you can on page 2 of the booklet. Once you've added all of the information you can think of, be sure to share this with someone in your network. Are they able to help you to generate other information or for you to elaborate on the information you've already included? If so, add it to your resume booklet. Pause this video now and return to it when you're finished. Now it's time to input your resume information from your resume booklet into My Blueprint. When your resume is complete, ask someone from your network to proofread it and provide you feedback. And remember, there should never be spelling or grammatical mistakes in your resume. To help you to learn your way around the My Blueprint resume tool, let's watch a short video. Hello, and welcome to the My Blueprint 
Blueprint Education Planner video series. In this video, we will show you how students can add and track their experiences while creating a customizable resume. To get started, invite students to log into their My Blueprint account. Select Work from the left-hand navigation menu and select Resumes. New to resume building, students can learn about building an effective resume by clicking the resume guide on the right hand side of the page. When students are ready to get started, click create resume and add a title. This makes it easy for students to develop multiple resumes tailored to specific opportunities. From inside the resume, students will be prompted to fill in each resume section. Simply click the blue Add button on each of the resume sections to begin filling in content. Not sure where to start? Select the blue Add button and click the Need Ideas tab. This will provide students with real-life examples and written prompts to support independent creation of their resume. Even better, all of these sections are fully editable, so students can easily return at any time and edit their resume content. On the left-hand side of the page, students will see the Resume Section Navigator. Creating a resume for a scholarship opportunity? For this, my student may wish to include their volunteer experience first. Students can simply drag and drop the resume sections into whatever order makes sense for them and the opportunity they are creating the resume for. For students to view a resume preview, simply click the Preview Resume button in the bottom right-hand corner. This will showcase the printer-friendly version of their resume. In the top left-hand corner, students will see the option to change their resume design or once again to switch the order of their resume sections. Students can easily add their resume to a portfolio by clicking Add to Portfolio button in the bottom right-hand corner or select Export. Depending on the design they've chosen, students may have the option to download their resume as a Word document, PDF, or text file. Wanting to share this resume with a potential employer, teacher, or family member, students can simply select the Share button, enter a recipient's email, select the format, and click Email Now. This will send their resume by email directly from their My Blueprint account. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out the rest of our video series for more information and tutorials on Education Planner. Now it's time to log back into your My Blueprint account and use the resume creation tool as you were just instructed. Good luck, and remember to use someone from your network if you need help. If you're a new student to My Blueprint and have yet to establish account, Follow the four simple steps on the bottom of your screen to navigate to video one, which is create a My Blueprint account.